I found these kind of videos so useful when I was packing for my own hospital bag that I decided that I wanted to make my own reaction video. This is based on my labor experience that was a couple of weeks ago, about six, seven weeks ago now. Um, I am a first time mother, so obviously I do not have any experience as to how a labor would be, what I need to use in the hospital and what I need before and after and that sort of thing. But I'm usually an organized person and I'm a very good planner. So I kind of think of all of the pros and cons and think of every possible options um, when I'm packing things. And I like to pack as light as possible so that I'm not overwhelmed with anything at all. Um, having said all of those things, I think I have made a lot of rookie mistakes for sure. I can already recall a few things that I packed. Uh, in fact, I feel like I have already overpacked. You know, I stayed in the hospital overnight. I had a regular, a normal delivery. Um, and it was only one night that I stayed in the hospital. So a lot of things that I had, I hadn't used it at all because my mental state was entirely elsewhere. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to react to this video. What I'll do is I'll insert um, the clip over here. And then I will talk you through what I packed, why I used it or why I found it useful or why I found it not useful. I hope you're able to get some inspiration and I hope this helps you while you are packing your own hospital bag. Um, also, just to give you a little bit of context, if this is the first time that you're watching any of my videos, I live in the UK and I had my baby in the middle of the third lockdown in the UK. So the rules and regulations in the hospital was very different from how it usually is um, without the lockdown. So that's the idea, the general idea behind it. And yeah, let's get on to it. Like a lot of other things that is usually overwhelming, having a baby, packing a hospital bag is one of the things that was overwhelming as well. It feels so odd looking at myself being pregnant like that. Let me just explain it to you. First of all, this is the bag that I've used. It is a cabin size bag which is extendable also. Now, uh, this one has wheels and it has rollers and it can rotate 360 degrees. What I would always suggest is to use a suitcase which has rollers. I've seen a lot of people use weekend bags and day traveling bags. It is quite handy because it's very compact and it fits a lot in. I would agree that it fits a lot more than a cabin size suitcase and it is smaller than that. But it is going to be difficult for you to carry everything. So I always recommend using a um, suitcase with rollers in. I definitely stand by this. That suitcase was a lifesaver. It's so easy to push that along while you're walking from one end to another as opposed to carrying a weekend bag or a day bag. And they give you tables and chairs and everything to lay your suitcase and, you know, unpack it and pack it and everything. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. So I'm going to take this with me and I am taking my nursing pillow as well. I had all good intentions of using the nursing pillow while I was in the hospital but because we were rushing to actually get to the hospital and um, the way things turned out we just forgot to take the nursing pillow from the car it was only the suitcase that actually brought in for me and I didn't really have the need to use a nursing pillow we just used pillows and everything to layer up so that wasn't very useful. But then I eventually decided that I wasn't going to pack two different bags, I was just going to use one. The reason being, when you have so many different bags and you have different things everywhere, it's going to get overwhelming for you during labor and even after labor, especially when you need to pack all of your things back to leave the hospital. You have too many things to carry, you have too many things in your mind. It's easy to be clutter free with just one bag and to try and be as minimalistic as possible when you're going into the hospital and when you're coming out to school. So one bag of this for all of us. So I have packs for myself, for the baby and for Lakshman in here. I've also used various different packing cubes in the suitcase so that I can differentiate different things. Packing cubes was another lifesaver. It made things so much more easier for Lakshman to find it during labor and it made things so much more easier for the next day for me myself uh, because it was all very organized. I love packing cubes. It's a game changer when you're traveling. I've had all of these things for quite some time now. Let me just show you the 
kinds of packing cubes I use. Um, I either use clear bags like this or I use packing cubes that has a mesh opening where you can see what you have in there. It's so much more easier when you have Ziploc bags and packing cubes that has a mesh cover so you can see what's inside. Usually it's your birth partner or worst case scenario is your midwife will need to find something from you. No, but my wife didn't have to find anything until Dr. is there with me, so he found everything. I've got a pair of flip-flops for myself, and I've kept it in a zip-flop bag, although this is brand new and it's clean. It somehow eats me out that I have to put slippers up. I definitely used that slippers um, in the hospital. I think I wore a pair of shoes when I left from home, and then I wore the flip-flops so it was easy when I had to get down from the bed, go to the toilet, and get back up again other clothes without a plastic bag and I would always pack my slippers in a plastic bag and then put in my suitcase. Then I've got a water bottle. This one has the hourly timestamp. I've got a similar one at home. Must, must have. Uh, one thing that I did was, because it was so early in the morning that we were leaving, I ended up taking my water bottle from home as well. This one was already in my hospital bag, so I ended up with two water bottles um, and yeah, I had to bring the other one back home. I bought another one for my hospital bag because I want to keep everything in my hospital bag ready and have it in the car ready. I don't want to have a separate list where when I'm already in labor or when I'm already in pain and I need to rush to the hospital, I don't want to have to search for things from my list and then pack it into the bag and then leave. I just want to think about leaving straight away rather than having to think about other things. In this one, I've got all of my undergarments and I've got my cozy socks also. I've got another packing cube. Definitely needed that cozy socks. I've got very cool feet. If you're fine, you're very, very warm blooded, you don't need anything at all. Um, the labor ward, your maternity room, and everything is quite warm, so you don't necessarily need any of those things. But because my feet get cold easily, I definitely needed that. I've got two sets of pajamas in here it is the button up pajama that I have, and I've also got a robe that I may need to wear over while I'm. I only used one set of pyjama because I stayed in the hospital for one night. Had I had my bath the next day, I would have uh, changed into the other pyjamas but I didn't. It was so difficult for me to have my bath on my own because I had to take the baby into the bathroom myself um, and you know there wasn't really any help to leave the baby in the nursery or no one else was around and even while Lakshman came to visit me during the visiting hours just didn't feel like having a bath at all. I freshened up, but not a bath. And finally, I've got a towel. I've also got one of these. Towel, yes, I used it to wipe my face and everything. This is a peri bottle. Apparently, the hospital also gives you one of it, but it's not in this shape. And this is. Hospital didn't give me that, and I didn't even use that. I heard that it's terrifying to pee right after labor. So they needed that to kind of ease you into it, but I didn't. I was just extremely tired and exhausted at the end of the labor. When I had to pee, I couldn't use that. And also, your first pee right after labor, they have to measure it to make sure you have, um, you know, had the right intake of um, liquid, I think, and the right output of liquid also. So you couldn't possibly use that at all. And I didn't even use it the next day. I just found that leaning forward helped a lot more. I had a forceps delivery, I had an episiotomy and then a vacuum and then finally a forceps because a vacuum failed also. So I've had all of those things but even with that it wasn't that bad. To be honest it wasn't that bad, I didn't need it. I got one of those and I thought it is going to be very, very handy to use. I also got this postpartum pad system. I cannot recommend this enough if you are going into labor. If you're packing a hospital bag, you must, must, must have this. This is the best ever. Um, again, forcep delivery, you lose complete control of your bladder. And if you need to go to the loo, you cannot control it. Literally, I tell you, you don't even have that feeling. You just need to go immediately. Um, and this was a lifesaver so many times. I used this for the first three or four days, I think. Um, and then I managed to change out of that. Next, I've got these two pouches of toiletries. 
I don't know what to do myself with the toiletries. Um, I didn't have my bath the next day and obviously I wasn't in any mental state to uh, do my regular skincare or do any makeup whatsoever. Not that I'm keen on makeup, I just wanted to, you know, freshen up a little bit so I look nice for photos and everything, uh, especially when I go home. But I kind of went into an argument with the midwife the next day because they refused to let me go back home and I wanted to go back so badly because I was just feeling extremely lonely and it was difficult to manage Levi on my own in the hospital. There are so many midwives, but there's so many other patients as well. So you can't really um, expect them to help you all the time. And I just wanted to go back home so that I had my family support. Um, so we were rushing and I left at 10 o'clock at night the next day. And because it was an argument and the midwife only agreed to allow me to go back like extremely last minute, um, I wasn't in any mood to put on any makeup. All I did was powder and eyeliner. That's it. I didn't use anything else from my toiletry kit apart from obviously um, face wash and wipes and uh, powder, comb, deodorant. That's it. Nothing else. I didn't obviously need anything else. I also forgot to brush my teeth the next day. Completely forgot. Didn't realize until late that night um, until I came back home actually because I didn't sleep the whole night. I was awake the entire night with the baby on me. And because I didn't sleep, I didn't feel the need to have to brush. You know, we always wore masks and everything in the hospital when anyone came to see you, like your midwife or um, the health visitor or someone comes to give you food or your tablet or anything like that, you have to wear your mask on. So it kind of didn't bother. I had mouthwash, but I kind of forgot about the mouthwash also didn't even use that um i don't think there was anything else i didn't bother using lotion i just i couldn't be bothered to do anything at all the next day so forget it i didn't want to do anything it may look as if it is a lot but this is far far lesser than it what definitely I was a lot in this pouch here i've got some of my makeup items now there's no judgment when it comes to makeup it's entirely up to you whether you want to use makeup or not it's just very very basic makeup kit in there like a lip balm powder mascara and then i've already got travel brushes that i always travel with these are things that i've had for a long time and this one was a very recent I feel so foolish that I've packed so many things and didn't even use it but had I been in the right state of mind, I definitely would have used some of those things. I was so pleasantly surprised with this. It's such a cute thing. It's a stand fan. It's a table top fan or even a handheld fan. It comes in three speeds. I can charge it with a USB port. But I didn't originally think of buying this at all, even when people said that. But I noticed off late that I'm getting hot flushes. And I suddenly realized if I'm extremely hot and sweaty during labor, it's going to be very, very uncomfortable. Or even during active labor. So I suddenly. It did become really hot during labor, but I wasn't in any state to ask for that fan. Completely forgot about the fan and didn't even bother. However, that fan is so, so useful. We use it every single day at home now because it's portable, super strong, and it's rechargeable. You don't even need battery for it. It's so worth it. It was only like a 10 pound something from Amazon, but um, it works far, far better than any other cheap fans or any other portable fans, and it's really, really good. There's a farmers on Amazon. It is so good, and I'm very, very impressed with it. These are the things that I've packed for myself, and the next ones that I want to show you are the things that I've packed for the baby. Now, you don't need a lot of things for the baby at all for the hospital. It is quite contrary to popular belief. First and foremost, hospitals don't want children to be fully wrapped up and bundled up in layers and layers of clothes while they're there. Because as soon as the baby is born, they have a lot of tests to run. They have to give some injections and vaccines and they have to... I can confirm, you cannot bundle up your baby all the time. In fact, some of the midwives told me not to uh, dress the baby up at all because the maternity ward is quite warm and they just swaddle the baby with their own um, cellular blanket and that's it because they had to take him in and out for blood tests, for vaccines, for a lot of checkups that they do. Um, it's just troublesome for them to, you know, undress a baby and dress him up again or for you to dress him up again each time and then every few minutes someone is coming to check so yeah don't bother dressing him up too much um, 
I was going to say unpacking, but not unpacking. They have to keep undressing the babies and put on the clothes and everything, and it becomes inconvenient for them because they are always rushing for time. So the hospitals would always prefer to bundle the baby up in swaddles, and they have their own swaddles. That's why I packed bare minimum for the baby. Then this one is a um, full body suit that I've got. So I've got two pairs of full body suit depending on his size, and I've got two pairs of dress again depending on his size. I've got one muslin cloth, quite a big one, which I can use to swaddle if I need it, and I've got one cap to put on my. I use a cap. I used. Um the swaddle. Actually, I used everything. I think there was only one extra vest that I didn't use ultimately, but yeah, I had to change multiple times because it was the first time with a bit of mucus and spit up and this and that and everything. So those things were handy. It is advisable to have a cap so that you can put it on the baby a couple of minutes after he's born to try and retain heat because babies will lose their heat and their body temperature as soon as they come out. I've got a pack of nappy. Now with this nappy here, um, this is only a pack of 22. If you ever run out of nappies, the hospital will have plenty of it. So I don't remember how many of those nappies I used. But it definitely wasn't that entire pack. It was probably one third or maybe even half of it maximum, not more than that. You don't need to carry so many different bags with you for nappy's sake, okay? Just one pack will do. I was even considering taking only half of it, and I thought I've got the space, so I'm just going to take one bag. And I've got water wipes. Some people would recommend. Must, must, must have water wipes. I almost ran out of that by the next day itself because as soon as your baby is born, he will have a lot of poo, meconium, and everything. So, you need a lot of wipes to clean everything all the time. Take even two packs if possible. I took one and I was worried I was going to run out by the next day, but yeah, thank God I left the next day evening. Taking um, cotton wool, so you can use that with water, but the hospitals recommend water wipes also. This one is 99.4% water, so this is quite good. Let me pack all of this stuff back up again, and then I'll show you what I have on the other side. I have a small zip compartment over here, and I've put a few small things. Let me show you what I've had in here. I've got an extra long charger in this pouch, and the plug to go along with it. I'm only taking my full charger must have an extra long charger definitely because the plug point is far away from your bed and you can't be walking and standing all the time you need something that stretches all the way to your bed so that was really handy taking any watch charger or anything else and i'm not taking my MacBook or ipad a lot of people who know that they're going to be induced or who know that they're going to be in the hospital for quite some time will take all of these things either by entertainment purpose or because they're busy they have a lot of work to do. I'm taking a box of paracetamol just in case I need it. I didn't use my own paracetamol because the midwives brought um, paracetamols during each meal and it was quite easy to get it off them. I don't want to have to ask the nurses or the midwives and wait for some time for them to bring because everyone's really busy in the hospital and these things are quite handy. So you just carry it yourself. This is the only extra different stuff that I have. And I've got um, a box of cards. This is monoplate labor. I am embarrassed to admit that I didn't use it at all. My labor kind of escalated quite quickly. I have recorded a video last week. I think it was last week that I uploaded this video about my labor story. So I'll link that up for you to um, watch it so you'll understand how my labor went and you'll have that, uh, you know, the information as well. Um, it escalated quite quickly, so we didn't really have any time to rest or relax or, you know, kind of die with our minds whatsoever, so I didn't use it. But it was so small that it didn't really bother me. And a lot of time playing Monopoly all the time. It is really well loved. You can see that everything is torn and it's already ripping into pieces, so I've had to keep it in a sandwich bag to make sure it doesn't fall off. This is just so I can entertain myself and kind of divert my mind from you know, whatever is going on in case I need to be in the hospital for slightly longer than I anticipate. So I've got this in here and it hardly takes up so much space at all. These two are the extra stuff that I've had and I've also bought um, a travel deodorant and a travel toothbrush for luxury. At the moment in England, he didn't need either one of those at all because he didn't stay with us. So 
uh, he didn't stay in the hospital, he went back home and then he came back the next day during visiting hours at about 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock if I'm not mistaken. So that was unnecessary. Um, your birth partners cannot see the organizers or the family with you during active labor. But if you and your baby are expected to stay at the hospital or whatever your partner's not, but for whatever reason, if lunch breaks will need to be there for longer than anticipated, I've got these two for you. In this final compartment here, I've got the coming back home outfit. The coming back home outfit usually has a lot of thought put into it because you're bringing your baby back home for the first time. You probably have family and friends wanting to see pictures and everything, and you're definitely going to be taking as pictures also. So people usually try and match the whole family, you know, color coordinates everything. Um, since I'm having a boy, I try to color coordinate. My coming back home outfit is in here. It's just a blue jeans dress. It's not from Sheen, but I have one of these Sheen bags, so I'm just using this bag here. I got this as a Christmas gift, and it is a maternity dress postpartum. You are not going to bounce back to your normal size at all. You, you will still look as be six to seven months pregnant. I think I looked as if I was about five months pregnant or so the next day, um, and it subsided quite quickly after that. Uh, but yeah, I'm not back to my regular size. So maternity dress for the next day going back home is a very good idea. I took my maternity dress to be comfortable. There's no point packing jeans, there's no point packing anything tight, uh, legging or whatever it is. So I just want to be comfortable so I'm packing this. And I've also got one of these things. Now this one is one of those belly bands. It's to hold everything together. It's not because I want to look cinched, I want to look slim or anything like that. It's because once you've had your baby, everything is loose. Your organs are all trying to find its way back. Yeah, it's true that your organs are trying to find its way back and everything is loose, but I didn't use that. I just wasn't bothered. I couldn't be bothered. I thought, I've just had a baby. I don't need to look good and I need to give some more time for my body to kind of, you know, get everything together. So, gonna use it. This is Lakshman's shirt. He's obviously not gonna be wearing this shirt during labor. Even if you're not staying over it, if you're leaving a couple of hours after the baby is born, he can then change into this shirt. And it was pointless for me to pack his shirt because he obviously didn't stay in the hospital with me. He came to pick me up at 10 o'clock at night, we went back home and that's when he changed at home. So, didn't have to pack it in my hospital bag. Finally is a baby's clothes. This is a cellular blanket that I've got for the baby that I'll be using. But yeah, I'll used it for sure. Um, I've got two pairs of clothes in here, depending on his size. One is newborn, one is zero to three months. He's got a he's got Vincent's in here also. So this is purely his coming back home outfit, which I will change him into just before we leave the hospital. It's always a good idea to have two sizes, a newborn and zero to three, because you never know what size your baby is going to be. I ended up using the newborn one, um, so it was the body suit, the newborn body suit, and um, the cap and the mittens and the cellular blanket. That's all I've packed in my hospital bag. So this is the one suitcase that I'm taking, just everything in here, and I'm also taking the baby clothes in here. So if you're going to be feeding your baby as soon as it's born, then it is advisable that you have the missing baby. So that your lactation specialist or even your midwife will be able to help you and show you how to use this. Um, I got this from a specific. I definitely had high plans or high hopes rather of using that nursing pillow in the hospital but it isn't what I expected it to be. Midwives help you with breastfeeding, they try and uh, guide you and teach you but a lactation specialist, a lactation consultant is the one who is best to give you advice about it. However, they're not ready to be available. It's only one or two and they work like, you know, nine to five or something. You need to make an appointment unless you're completely struggling, unless your baby is like severely underweight or something goes wrong and you need help uh, breastfeeding or even just feeding the baby. That's when a lactation consultant becomes available to you. So I didn't have anyone accessible to me at the time and I didn't need to use it. So I didn't even have it with me in the hospital and I'm glad I didn't because it would have been difficult for me to manage the baby as in carrying him myself and then the suitcase and this while I was moving from one place to another inside the hospital before Lakshman came to get me. Another thing that I forgot is a snack bag. I've got a bag of snacks. It's not in here, it is outside, it is actually hidden. If I keep it somewhere um, exposed and open, I know for a fact that I will finish it even before we get to the hospital. So I bought a bunch of snacks like protein bars and biscuits and knickknacks like um, sugar.
The snack bag is highly personalized, okay? Every single video that I saw about packing a hospital bag and what you actually need in a hospital bag says that you need a lot of snacks, a lot of sugary snacks, a lot of chocolates, like chocolate button and stuff like that, an isotonic drink. Um, because you won't be able to eat full meals, so you need like protein bars and these sort of things to keep your energy up during labor. What happened with me was that the only thing I had was a protein bar and then because my labor cut progressed quite quickly, I was in no mood to eat anything else. I didn't need any candies, any sweets, nothing. I probably had a few the next day, but you kind of lose appetite at that point during labor and even after labor uh, because there's so many things going on. So I lost appetite for sure. I didn't feel like eating anything. I just had a little bit here and there, that's it. Um, we brought back so many of those snacks. The only other thing that was really helpful from that snack bag was the isotonic drink. So I had the isotonic drink and the protein bar, that's it. Didn't have anything else, didn't touch one chocolate from there. So that's what I packed in my hospital bag and what I actually needed. If I think about it now, it was excessive. I didn't need two pajamas, I didn't need the peri bottle, I didn't need uh, one whole pack of nappy, but yeah, forget about the nappy. I didn't need that many snacks for sure. I didn't need that many toiletries at all. I hardly ever used anything. I suppose when you're in the hospital right after labor, you don't really want to do everything and you're in no state to do your normal routine, you know? So I suppose it's good to think about that while you're packing, which I missed out, obviously, even if it was minimal uh, toiletries and you know travel size toiletries and everything that I have packed. Some of the things that I did, some of the idea that I had was quite good and some of them was like probably pointless but yeah um, I hope you found inspiration from that and I hope this video helps you when you're packing a hospital bag and I want to wish you all the very best for your labor. It is going to be difficult for sure, it's never easy, however it's completely completely worthwhile when you see your baby born, when he's crying, when he's on top of you, when they put him on you right after delivery, it's just worth every single pain and every single weight. So I want to wish you all the very best for it and if you have any questions let me know, if you have any suggestions as well uh, for future videos let me know and I will see you again in the next week's video. Bye!